With the Yumi rework now out, and after having watched the recent VARS video that talked about his opinion on Yumi, I wanted to explain my own opinion of why I think Yumi has been so problematic for the game, while also talking about why the rework is both a hit and a miss. To start, let's go over pre-rework Yumi's issues. Essentially, I think there are three main problems. Her target recipient being too vague, her design preying on the weakest link, and her lack of counterplay. What I mean by her target recipient being too vague is that she can be used well on any champion in the game because of how versatile her effects are. The healing, shielding, and adaptive force are pretty obvious in how they can be useful on everyone, but the Q slow, R root, and E movement speed are also universally useful due to the fact that they can be used as either disengage or engage given the situation. Really, the only thing that isn't universally useful is the attack speed steroid, but even then, it can be used on quite a few champions like fighters to create a balanced monstrosity of making up for what should be their weaknesses. And pair this with the type of items she can build that provide incredibly useful bonuses that are similarly versatile, and it means that Yumi is never incentivized to stick with her AD carry to make them the carry, because she can just go off and join the top lane Garen, jungle Evelyn, or mid lane Victor, and provide just as useful effects to them as she could the AD carry, while also having a lot more safety than being on a fragile champion who lacks mobility and survivability. It's not only frustrating to the AD carry who picked a marksman with the expectation of having the support to make the game playable for them, but also leads into her second big issue, which is that she preys on the weakest links. In general, League does an alright job when it comes to team play, you don't want one player to be able to win the game completely on their own, because it's a 5v5 game, but you also don't want to take away League's laning phase, as it's a very core reason why people enjoy the game so much. This is why there are so many catch-up systems, with kill and death streaks stacking so fast, catch-up EXP systems, and mythics being the best in slot for everyone at first item. All of this is necessary due to how power is gained through items and levels, and the low skill nature of the game. A gold player could beat a master player if they had a significant lead, because most champions don't have much skill expression or counterplay in their kits, and it means that they can kind of just stat check the enemy to death with things like basic attacks, unmissable abilities, and passives. Then pair this with how many raw stats Yumi provides, and it ends up compounding the already strong champion into a much stronger one, and god forbid if the player knows how to play with a Yumi and foregoes their standard build in order to account for the Yumi by giving them things they need creating an even worse balanced monstrosity. But either way, this means that Yumi, due to her versatility, will always be able to hop on the strongest ally to enhance their power and carrying potential, turning the 7-0 laner with an item lead on everyone into even more of a monster due to the fact that her W lets her anchor to them and follow them wherever they go, unlike other enchanters. It pretty much means that if Yumi is on the other team, seeing your top laner get stomped by the enemy is all the more frustrating because you know that 6-0 Garen who's two full items up on you is going to just tear through your entire team once Yumi hops on him for mid and late game to make up for all his weaknesses and make him even more of a monster, because she's putting two people's worth of carry potential on a single fed person. Yumi is essentially the snowball champion. And then the last issue pre-work Yumi has is her lack of counterplay, which is also probably the biggest. As I mentioned, counterplay is an issue that affects the game as a whole and not just Yumi, but is essentially just a way for the enemy to react and outplay their opponent through points in the design that give them the opportunity to. For example, skill shots are typically a good source of counterplay and seem to be the go-to method for Riot, due to the fact that the enemy could potentially dodge, but in reality, skill shots are just easier to add counterplay to and are not inherently giving any counterplay because what a skill shot does is provide opportunity for the user to miss, not opportunity for the opponent to dodge. For example, imagine Ezreal's Q. It's teetering on the edge of counterplay, and I would even say that it's not really a source of counterplay in most cases, because it moves too fast, is too wide, and isn't really telegraphed well like Jin W or Vex Q. In most cases, Ezreal will be able to hit his Q because of how slow the average champion speed is and how large hitboxes are, paired with what I just mentioned about the ability itself, meaning that it's up to Ezreal being bad and missing, rather than the opponent outplaying him and dodging. And you might think, yeah okay that makes sense, but how can you make a point and click have counterplay then if the enemy literally can't dodge? So to explain this, let's look at Renata's W. Renata's W gives bonus attack speed and movement speed to the target that ramps up over the duration, but also, and probably more notably, gives the ability to revive the target when they die, if they can get a kill before the bailout timer runs out. 
It's a very strong and frustrating ability to verse because you just throw it on a dive champion like Tristana and let her go ham on the enemy with the bailout mechanic kind of just being an extra get out of jail free card since the Tristana will most likely have done enough damage in that 5 seconds to be able to revive herself if she needs it while the duration is typically too long for the enemy to just wait it out. But all of this could be solved by just adding some simple counterplay. For example, say that the W would only cause the ally to enter Bailo if they died within 0.5 seconds of being placed on them. This means that the Renata needs to consider her options and either use the ability for its useful steroids, foregoing the bailout revive, or try to go for the clutch revive by timing it well. And this also means that the enemy can understand this, and if they haven't seen the Renata W used yet while killing the AD carry, they can stop at the last second to bail out the W, wait the quick 0.5 seconds, and then kill the AD carry, outplaying the Renata with its counterplay. When done right, counterplay gives skill expression to the player and the enemy, and is a very useful way to keep simple kits like Old Udyr fair, without them being able to just roll you with no chance to miss a skill shot. So now taking this and applying it to Yumi, Yumi's main problem is not actually her untarget ability, but rather the fact that she is almost 100% effective without ever having to hop out of it, meaning that she can just sit in the untarget ability for the entire fight. Doing something like making Yumi need to hop on and off frequently for a lot more of her power means that the enemy has opportunity to do outplay her and catch her when she jumps off. Something like instead of Yumi's W providing adaptive force, it could be a stacking mechanic that affects the next ability used based on how many times W was used, so she can either hop on and off the same target to stack it, or hop between allies quickly and fight in order to. It doesn't really matter what the change is, just that the intention of incentivizing her to hop on and off for more of her power is achieved. And this also means she doesn't have to have such a harsh penalty for when she does get caught, because it can happen more often meaning that the enemy can't just save a single CC ability and be able to insta-kill her because she's now effectively stunned for 5 seconds. It unnecessarily disincentivizes Yumi from hopping around in a fight, and with it gone, it can make hopping around on Yumi much more fun and engaging. So now with what I believe her three main issues were, let's look at how the rework did. Starting with what I think they did well, the passive incentivizing her to stick to her carry is nothing but a good change because it means Yumi won't be hopping on the strongest ally anymore out of landing phase and turning them into a monster. The removal of her adaptive force is an incredible change that I honestly didn't see coming but is definitely a welcome one because it means she's far less versatile and can't just hop on an assassin or mage anymore. The bonus magic damage on hit does something similar to the adaptive force removal by making her less versatile while also having a very nice crit scaling which enforces that marksman yumi combo that is far more fun and fair to verse than something like a yumi fighter. And then lastly, their decision to remove the current max HP scaling on Q was another thing that completely caught me off guard but literally just makes the game better as a whole because these random tacked on passives that provide nothing to the function of the kit only serve to make balance harder and make the game more frustrating. And then now onto what I'm not a fan of, starting with the Q. Pretty simply, the Q shouldn't slow above 30%. In fact, no slow in the game should ever go above something like 40%, because slows always apply last, they cripple certain champions way harder than others, and the base movement speed in League is already slow enough to where dodging is relatively impossible in most cases. The old Q slow was enough and honestly might have been too good on her with her old kit, but now that the adaptive force is gone and she's incentivized to set on a fragile marksman, I think a 20 or 30% slow is fine, but an 80% slow for 2 full seconds is actually just absurd and should definitely be looked at. Next is the healing, which is kind of a personal preference issue because I really dislike Riot's emphasis on trying to force action with everything in the game, killing off any sort of strategic macro based playstyle like Old Banner, ZZ Rot, and Gold Pretend in favor of trying to make everything gated by attacking enemies. But on the other hand, I can also understand that with their mana situation, Yumi's heal was very hard to balance and kind of just created a scenario where you can never lose lane with how much healing she had. Next are a few less important ones that I'll just name off really quick, being the mana restoration on her E that doesn't really make any sense and just adds more random unbalanced power, the bonus resistances when she casts ult are cool but provide too much and should just be a shield or something. And her passive healing looks like it'll just be some random healing that kind of just happens now and then rather than any type of skill expression, which I personally dislike being a feature on kits because it's not very interactive. Maybe giving her a way to lower its cooldown, like hopping between allies, would be a good addition. 
And then lastly, the entire point of counterplay. I know they kind of dropped the idea of her hopping around combat altogether with this change and just emphasized her pocket playstyle, but the fact that she still provides all her power from complete untargetability is still an issue that is going to cause the same amount of issues we saw with her last kit, because it was by far the biggest problem. Pretty much, the rework seemed like it had good intentions and tried to address some of the issues, but they left out the biggest one and to be honest really the only important one. All in all with this rework, I'd say they hit the mark, but definitely shot at the wrong target.